what the heck are all these options in New Game Plus and Symphony of War? So if you go here to New Game Plus, and select Begin the Game, and hit New Game Plus again, it'll bring up all the options. What you see here is the standard settings for Captain difficulty. Same here, and same here. Now obviously I haven't beaten the game since I bought the Legends DLC, so I don't have some of these unlocked. But these are actually all only if you have beaten the game. So we'll start with these for you returning players. Fresh start is just as described. No units or items will be available from your previous run. This skips ahead to chapter 4 and grants you some additional resources. I'm assuming it's just the stuff that you would have gotten if you had claimed everything in chapter 1 to 3. Heroes Memories makes your story characters maintain their abilities from your previous playthrough. Doppelgangers makes it so that you gain the new characters as well as the old versions of the characters as you're playing through the game. Early Powers makes it so that all of your Nephilim powers are unlocked immediately, and Veteran Troops will increase their stats based on how many times you've played through the game with those troops. But it only applies to non-story characters. I don't know the specific stat modifiers, but if you click on this, it will increase the enemy stats overall. If anyone knows the specific modifiers, please leave a comment down below. Please leave a comment down below. Battle Healing Adjustment essentially just reduces the amount you would normally heal with any of your support classes, all the way down to 33% if you choose. CP is the experience bar that fills up, allowing you to master your class and class up. You can adjust this so that your units either grow more quickly or grow more slowly. In certain maps, the Donari Temple allows you to revive your units. This allows you to increase the cost of that service. Shop prices, pretty obvious. It adjusts the price of things in the shop. This will mess with the in-game economy so if you want a harder playthrough where you can't afford as much stuff, feel free to use this. This either increases or decreases the amount of resources that you'll get from mines, meaning that iron and gems will be significantly more scarce, or more abundant, depending on what you want to set this to. When you force enemies to surrender, they will give you gold at the end of every mission. This allows you to increase or decrease the amount that you are paid out. Magic Fatigue modifier is very interesting. What it does is it makes it so that magic is less effective upon repeated battles. This means units like wizards and healers will either be significantly more effective or significantly less effective. The term phase means every battle in a given turn. So enemy phase, player phase, green unit phase. If enemies repeatedly attack you, your healers are going to become much less effective if you have this activated, depending on what setting you use. Or they could be much more effective, ramping up each time you're attacked. I could think of some fun uses of this where you have some kind of crazy healing unit with a bunch of Paladins and Diana, for example. Enemy Cavalry Hit and Run modifier basically sets the amount that the enemy unit can canto, to put it in Fighter Emblem terms. Enemy Cavalry normally have the ability to hit you and then move disabled. With this setting enabled, it gives the enemies the ability to move either two spaces or three spaces. Artifacts in Symphony of War cost a certain amount of capacity. You can mess with the amount that they cost by activating this. Squad Capacity Penalty determines the additional cost of each squad mate beyond fifth. The standard is plus two, meaning that your sixth squad mate will normally cost 12, and the seventh would cost 14. You can either decrease or increase this amount in order to in order to get bigger squads faster, or to make it more difficult to increase the size of your squads. Advanced enemy AI will make the AI smarter. They'll be better at targeting damaged units and coordinating their attacks to be more effective. Sandbox Arena allows you to just enter the arena in order to test units in. I really like this idea because it lets you test out a squad and see how they function without actually going into a chapter and wasting much of time. VOC++. Zone of Control is a special ability that you can unlock in the tech tree. It causes terrain to be difficult around your units. Or, in the case of this being enabled, all enemies will have Zone of Control, causing your units to use more movement to move past enemies. If you have this enabled and have the Zone of Control talent from the tech tree, it will mean that enemies will use even more movement to move past you. The Merchant Storeroom is what's on the tin. Normally when you buy an item from the shop, it's gone forever, and it just leaves this blank spot. Merchant Storeroom allows that spot to be filled with a new item. However, the base cost of that item will be increased. Nature's Wrath causes inclement weather and rough terrain to cost additional movement on top of what it normally did before. Nerfalim makes it so that all of your story characters have their stat modifiers reduced, and it also makes it take longer for your Nephilim powers to recharge. Veteran Enemies allows enemies to keep up with your New Game Plus increased stats and power. Every time you complete a New Game Plus, it'll essentially increase their stats overall. 
all. When combined with enemy power, you could see how enemy stats would start to quickly ramp up past where you might want them to be. Well equipped the enemies simply means that enemies will sometimes have artifacts equipped to their squad. As far as I'm aware, you don't get the artifacts if you defeat them. Enemy scramble simply means that enemy spawn locations will be swapped randomly. This could mean that a cavalry squad is now in the spot that an infantry squad used to be, or archers might replace frontline units. This could be good or bad, but it will certainly add a lot of replayability and some new puzzles for you to solve. Enemy specialists causes enemies to gain powers similar to skills, such as arcane barrier for example. Stalwart enemies essentially makes it harder to force enemies to surrender. They start with more morale, and they will lose morale more slowly. This can really hurt your gold gain, because forcing enemies to surrender is one of the best ways to make gold. Elite enemy leaders essentially causes the enemy leader to gain stat bonuses for each living squad mate. Combined with all of the other stat increases, this can make enemy leaders pretty ridiculous. Inexperienced recruits makes it so that you have to get more XP in order to advance the level. Dawn of the Risen essentially gives your enemies access to more necromancers and undead. Just to show you what I've been dealing with, I'd like to show you what is automatically activated when you choose the Ludicrous difficulty setting. So these are the settings for Ludicrous. You will automatically receive 66% of the normal healing, although your CP growth can stay at the standard amount. The Vive costs are significantly increased. This means that Ludicrous permadeath is significantly taxing on your gold. Shop prices are also increased, another hit to your economy. And the same with resources. You'll have significantly less iron and gems if you're playing on ludicrous difficulty. Bounties are set to standard, which is great because we're going to need that extra gold due to these additional costs. Magic fatigue modifier, combined with the battle healing adjustment, has made it so that healers are significantly less effective in ludicrous. I think this means that I'll probably want to push for oracles as soon as possible. Enemy cavalry automatically gain canto, meaning that they can move two after attacking, and artifacts automatically cost 180% more. Essentially, it's going to double the capacity cost of all of your artifacts. And the squad penalty is increased to plus three, meaning that it's going to be very difficult for you to increase the size of your squads very quickly. This is why I prioritized gaining as much leadership on units as possible in the early game. As you can see, these secondary things are pretty much all disabled except advanced enemy AI. I can confirm that the AI are very ruthless and quite smart. And of course, as it's not a New Game Plus playthrough, none of these are enabled. That's it from me today, everyone. Thanks for watching. Did I get anything wrong? If so, please correct me in a comment down below, and I'll pin it to help out the members of the community. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content. Thanks, and have a great day.